Good morning, and welcome to our virtual service for the First United Methodist Church of Lombard. My name is Alex, and I will be taking you through this week's announcements. Looking at this week, Tuesday the 23rd, there's a finance and stewardship meeting on Zoom. That's at 7 p.m. And there will also be recording for ministries and music that evening at the building. Wednesday to Friday this week, the office will be closed. There are no programs running. Uh, everything will be shut down for uh, the Thanksgiving holiday. And next Sunday is the first Sunday of Advent. If you can believe it or not, we are already here to Advent. 845 is the Christian Formation Hour that's at the church building. And 10 a.m. we have our virtual and in-person services. Looking ahead, starting November 28th, we have a new Christian Formation Hour book. That book is The Light of the World, A Beginner's Guide to Advent. We've got some more information on an upcoming slide about that book. And starting December 1st is a devotional study, Keep Watch With Me, with the first UCC. Again, more information on an upcoming slide about both of those. Here's a little information about that new Christian Formation Hour book, The Light of the World, A Beginner's Guide to Advent. Uh, this is a, a great book that talks about the birth of Jesus, so if you're looking to educate or re-educate yourself about that story, this is a great study for you to be a part of. Those dates run November 28, December 5, December 12, and December 19, and those are at 8.45 in the morning in the church library. We also have a partnership with the First UCC uh, to do a daily devotional. That was Keep Watch With Me. Um, this is a collaborative book made up of a, a pretty diverse uh, number of authors and contributors. Uh, so if you're looking for something just to sort of boost your uh, devotional efforts, uh, this is a great, great book study to be a part of. Those run on Wednesday, December 1st, December 8th, and December 15th. The Lombard Villa Park Food Pantry, uh, they're looking for toys and uh, they're collecting new unwrapped toys for ages newborn to 12 starting now until December 15th. They are always short on infant and toddler toys uh, for boys and girls age 10 and up. If you would like to donate, you can drop off toys in the church office and we appreciate your generosity. Again, we're looking for uh, new unwrapped toys for that event. And here's a big uh, update about the Oktoberfest auction. Uh, this update comes from Sue Friend, uh, and the auction committee extends its thank you to all of our church family for its support of the auction. Your financial sponsorships, donated items, and purchases have the net profit at just under $16,000. Now there are still a few opportunities to help, to help push this number over that $16,000 mark. Naturally, you can write a check to the auction sponsor uh, and there's still time to sign up for two events in December, and we hope you treat yourself by participating in them. If you want to participate, you can contact Denise Karoff King to sign up. The two events that are available are Wine and Appetizers. That's on Saturday, December 4th at 6 p.m. That is hosted at the home of Kadeen Stachelski. There's also the Hymn Sing on Sunday, December 12th after worship. Uh, other than joyful singing, um, which will be led by Brianna and Dan. Uh, there will be a brief history of each hymn that is presented. Refreshments will be served. All of the proceeds from the auction are being used to pay our apportionments, which support the mission outreach of the United Methodist Church. And that's it for this week's announcements. Again, we thank you so much for being here this morning, and we hope you enjoy the service. Good morning. Welcome to First UMC Lombard online worship service. I'm Nicole, your worship coordinator, and I'm so glad you joined us here today. If this is your first time joining us, please grab a cup of coffee and find your favorite spot. Today, Pastor Luis will be sharing about how we should not worry, giving thanks and blessings. Please say hello in the chat below to let us know you're here. And if you feel comfortable to do so, please feel free to share any joys or concerns that you might have. And remember, 
Our offering time is our moment to give back to God. If you feel comfortable to do so, please use the information provided on the screen now, such as our website or mailing in to share any offerings. And remember, your offerings make a difference indeed. And with that, let's worship. calls for believers to pray for all people, including leaders, reminding them of Christ's pleading for us with God, for which Paul has been called as an apostle to the Gentiles. Children of God, listen to these words from 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1-7 through from the Common English Bible. First of all, then, I ask that requests, prayers, petitions, and thanksgiving be made for all people. Pray for kings and everyone who is in authority, so that we can live a quiet and peaceful life in complete godliness and dignity. This is right, and it pleases God our, sa our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. There is one God and one mediator between God and humanity, the human Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a payment to set all people free. This was a testimony that was given at the right time, I was appointed to be a preacher and apostle of this testimony. I'm telling the truth, and I'm not lying. I am a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. The Word of God for all. Thanks be to God. Please join me in our gathering prayer. God be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. We gather before you today, O God, intent on giving you thanks. We remember the wonders of your past, even as we yearn for the wonders you have in store for us. We long to touch your mercy and your care, for our lives are often sown with tears. Help our rulers and authorities seek to the building of your kingdom and the triumph of your righteousness. Restore our fortunes, O God, like streams watering the wilderness that we may reap with shouts of joy what was planted in sorrow. Amen. The opposite of worry, fear, anxiety is faith, or better still, trust. If we were to trust in God as simply and completely as the birds of the air and the flowers of the fields do, we would not be anxious. We would still have responsibilities, but would not be anxious. Children of God, listen to these words recorded according to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 25 through 33 from the Common English Bible. Therefore, I say to you, don't worry about your life, what you eat or what you drink or about your body, what you wear. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds in the sky. They don't sow, seed, or harvest grain, or gather crops into barns. Yet, your Heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you worth much more than they are? Who among you, by worrying, can add a single moment to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? Notice how the lilies in the field grow. They don't wear themselves out with work and they don't spin cloth. But I say to you that even Solomon in all of his splendor 
wasn't dressed like one of these. If God dresses grass in the field so beautifully, even though it's alive today and tomorrow it's thrown into the furnace, won't God do much more for you, you people of weak faith? Therefore, don't worry and say, what are we going to eat? Or what are we going to drink? Or what are we going to wear? Gentiles long for all these things. Your heavenly Father knows that you need them. Instead, desire first and foremost God's kingdom and God's righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. This is the gospel of the Lord, and praise to you, O Christ. Hello, friends, and thank you for joining us this, mor this time. Probably be morning for you or afternoon or evening, but uh, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And what a gift, what a blessing we have that we can be together through the magic of technology. It is Thanksgiving Sunday. Can you believe it? It is also Christ the King Sunday, but I kind of... Uh, covered that piece last Sunday, and I wanted to concentrate more in Thanksgiving this time around. It is important for us uh, uh, to come to this time. I, I cannot believe it that this coming Thursday is, is Thanksgiving already. Um, remember the convoluted situation to trying to get the family on Zoom for our Thanksgiving dinner. This time we will be able to be together under the same roof, thanks be to God. So you may be worried or maybe wonder why this text for, for that, but this text 
have a lot to say to our behavior, to our sense-giving attitude, so let me share a few words with you. Indeed, society has changed a great deal since Jesus' times and in the way that uh, the writer of Matthew puts things in perspective. Definitions of poverty, wealth, and the good life are much different today than they were then. Remember uh, that I mentioned last Sunday that Matthew is encouraging people to look, to stay out of the comfort zone and look for the other, the outsiders, the Gentile. So Matthew is looking to convey the message to the first century church uh, in a way that have this distinct flavor. But for us, we are constantly bombarded with images and messages from advertising and media and sometimes even friends and family that encourage us to consume. It is amazing to me that in this time of inflation and ports being packed with cargo and no much distribution, we still see stores and retailers telling us that they're ready for uh, Black Friday, for the big deal, for everything. And we have been put messages in our mind that they have what we need and they're ready for us regardless of where things are. We have everything they have everything we think we need. Richard Bison, professor of uh, biblical uh, studies, says this, and I quote, this current state of affair caused a degree of pause when we read this past passage like the one from Matthew. All of Jesus' teaching in the Sermon on the Mount, this one is of more difficult section to understand. Jesus' words seems out of step of with our society or on the surface, they look, they lack coherency with the life we are living. As Ulrich Luce has put it, when interpreted in a superficial manner, this statement could not only have been written by a single guy living a carefree life on the beach in sunny Galilee. The implication of Jesus' message here is that much of what matter to us today, the material aspect of our life, should not be taken seriously and can be completely entrusted to a God who cares for us. And I end the quote. Here, I think that Jesus is exploring us to live life by faith, trusting that God will provide for our basic needs. I think to me that the text suggests that the one does not need, that one does not need to work to prepare for the future at all. We just simply need to relax knowing that God will take care of our need. This is because the Gentiles were so worried about status, about material things, because of the situation in where they were living. And Jesus wanted to make sense to their needs. Jesus wanted to make sense to what their experience. They, Jesus trying to explain that God uh, will take care of our needs, but most important, that means that we don't need to be worried because the same God is caring for all creation, including the area, the land, the earth in which we live. So it's interesting to know that Jesus' intentions is us to understand that discipleship, which is not a special calling to an elite uh, group like the Navy SEALs, but it include everyone who desire to follow Christ, must be learn how to live a life that is devoted to Jesus' teaching, to following Jesus, to understand God, and to be reliant on God's grace to provide for everything. Jesus is not calling us to abandon our life and to move to a desert to joy, a, a order or a monastery or empty our saving account or liquidate our 401k. Rather, Jesus is addressing the basis for excessive worry and anxiety that lead to live a life that is separated from God. Separated from God. We are very anxious people and we worry too much. At the beginning of the pandemic of prior that, I remember trying to find paper products and every shell in the store was uh, not having anything. 
I remember ordering paper products online, which is why it makes no sense to me. Shelves were empty and people were desperate looking for something, not realizing that we have everything that we need is we live and provide for ourselves, but we think that we worry on the last minute. It's like the lines we see when there are hurricanes in the islands or in the coast that people know that the hurricane season are coming and we always wait until the last minute to prepare ourselves. I remember back in the early 90s when we moved to the beautiful city of Buffalo, New York, and the housing where we live have a very nice pantry in the basement. And I was extremely curious about that. Why a pantry in the basement? I was told that there was time in which winter can be very cold and we should be prepared ahead of time and stuff things down in the basement so in case we cannot leave the house, we have everything we need. Norma heard that and right away prepared everything that our first winter we were just elated that we have everything that we need, even though we were able to still go out in the middle of the snow. And those were beautiful snow days. Uh, is you talking about snow falling and accumulation of snow? If you see what we're experiencing here in the Midwest, friends, uh, you have not seen anything like those days. We worry too much. We are anxious too much. The text calls us to a different set of values, to set different priorities. The Gentiles who are more, who are the outside the community of faith, both seek after these things and worry about their life, as I mentioned fear, their physical possession, and how to get to some kind of social status. A life devoted to God, live under the reign of God, or as I like to say, the kingdom of God, is living according to the values of the kingdom the values that Jesus has taught us. Yes, the text provides an opportunity for us to go and understanding why probably Jesus is teaching this at the Mount of Olive. The emphasis on the study is upon excessive worry and anxiety about what we need. It seems that we are in competing devotions. We want to be faithful to God, but we get so anxious about things that probably we don't need to be anxious. You always have heard me say that the only person that you need to be concerned and you have absolute control is you. It seems that we wanted to use our time, our energy, and our effort to try to get so anxious for things we have absolutely no control. But there is something here in the text that is important. The text is inviting us to take control of our spiritual life, to set our priorities straight, to make sure that as disciples, we are following exactly what we need to follow. Yes, it doesn't say that we will be less anxious or worried, but if we have aligned our priorities with the values of Christ, maybe we don't be so anxious about things we have no control whatsoever. Maybe if we are develop and, in, uh, and practice uh, those spiritual practices that we should be practicing as disciples, we should not be so anxious. But what does all of this have to do with Thanksgiving and what does all this have to do with us today? Well, simply, in Timothy, we experience uh, a teaching about prayer in all aspects of life, praying for leader, praying for everything. And it may be that our life of prayer needs to be in order. Maybe we need to start developing new ways in which we pray. To live in accordance with the reign of the kingdom of God as Christian, we are a community with a broader society, within the broader society that have a different system. If we are allowed the commercialization of the season to take the best of us, then we forget about what the season is all about. In the letter that I sent to you all this past week, I say something like this. As we enter into a Thanksgiving season, let us take time to express our appreciation to God for God's blessing in our life. How often we do that? One of the things I have learned very seriously during this past month and I have been at home and reflecting and not be able to move anywhere, and technically during this pandemic, is to express my gratitude to God. Not for anything special, not for anything in particular, just thank you, God. Thank you, God. And then I added, thank you for your faithfulness. 
Thank you for your companionship. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your care. Thank you for listening to our prayers. And I can go on and on and on, and I hope that you would. In anything, is anything we have learned in the past years is that we cannot take life for granted. Why to worry too much? Why so be anxious? Is I make plans and the plans change. We are grateful for the many things we have even experienced, even when we experience loss and even continue uh, grieving. Our faith teaches us that giving thanks to God is a gift we must express. And then I say that Thanksgiving is supposed to be more than a day set aside a year to eat all the food that we can and follow for a marathon, a football game, or the other version, Hallmark Christian Christmas movie. One of the very blessings that we have is that we have the opportunity to be people of, of thanksgiving, to give thanks. Sometimes we get even anxious and, and worry about setting up the dinner, the table, the food, the place. And I can feel, figure it out families getting anxious about who is sitting where, where are we going, and all those kind of things. And we should be put that aside and begin to express our gratitude to God for God being God not for anything special, just giving sense to God for God being our God, and then for God's faithfulness, for God's love, for God's care, for God listening to our prayers. Maybe that, if we start practicing those prayers, maybe we will not be so anxious. And I am not saying that anxiety and worry will be lifted from our shoulder. That's part of our humanity. But you, we should be doing better, including myself. So as we come to this time of sense, season of thanksgiving, may we express our thanksgiving to God, not for what we have, not for what we uh, enjoy, but for everything else that is in our life. Because at the end of the day, it's all because God has blessed us. From myself and my family and our staff, we wish you all a blessed thanksgiving day. Peace be with you all. It is our time to share with one another the joys and concerns. As you look into your back of the bulletin, you see the prayer list. We added car shavers, continue with Amy and Mike, Scassleberry, Tom Hayes, Ellen, Wolfgang, Shirley, Bonnie, Bill Batcher, the family of Marion Ward, the family of Jan Hills, Hannah and Bear, children of Jennifer and Nick Twell. Mike, Jean, Michael, Kip, and Skip look both all friends of Jean and Carol Wickson. Let us be in an attitude of prayer. Gracious Creator, you have given us so much, but too often we take those gifts for granted or some things to which we are entitled. You call us to live in caring community, but often we place our wants and our needs with those of other a distant second. You call us to share your gift with the world around us, but we are worried that there are many may not be enough, and our worrying get the way of our sharing. For all the times when we mistreat and misuse your gift, for all the time we assume that we get what we have by ourselves, forgive us and lead us back to the path of wisdom. And as we lift up to you the joys and concerns, the names and family and circumstances surround all of them, we know that you are with those who experience illness. I know, God, that you are present with those who experience loss and are grieving a loss of a loved one. And I know, God, that you are with those who are wandering around and waiting to hear news about medical tests and possibility of what is the next things that we need to do. We know, O oh God, that you're listening. And I am grateful to know, O oh God, that you are very present with all these circumstances. God is a gracious giver. God is a gracious, God is gracious in forgiveness. God calls us to new patterns, a new life. We are forgiven people. And because we are forgiven people and people who experience God's blessing and grace, we can pray together as Jesus taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, friends, share with one another signs of peace and love. Show Christ to one another that we may be redeemed, reminded of the peace that pass all understanding. You are by, surrounded by love. One is pressed peace and love to them. You are by yourself. I am embracing you. And peace be with you, Alex. Some of you may have received a letter from the church in which included a Thanksgiving offering. I encourage you to look beyond and see if there is a Thanksgiving offering that you can share with the church. That will help us tremendously. And we are grateful for your gift and your generosity. For that, we are beyond our blessings because we can continue doing what we are called to do. So join me now as we bless this gift this, this time. Our table's grown with too much food, so may our gift feed the hungry, welcome family into our home. So may we embrace the lonely, we sleep in warm beds at night, so may we shelter the homeless. We are blessed with more that we need, so may our gift fill the emptiness of our sisters, brothers, and siblings in need. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. It is amazing, but this setting, it is the last Sunday we will be here in this setting. It is the last Sunday I will be wearing my uh, fall stole. Next Sunday is the first Sunday in Advent. Can you believe it? Everything will be turned out into royal blue, and we will be preparing our journey for Christmas. I cannot believe it. We are saying that. Thank you to Deacon Jeannie, to Brianna, to Dan, to Nicole, to Alex, and everyone else to add. Help me put this service together. I'm grateful for you. And thank you, you for your time and your commitment to be with us during this time of worship. It is time for me to send you into the world. This is the week of Thanksgiving, and I hope and pray that whatever your destination may be, whatever the table may be, and whatever the food may be, whatever it is, that you experience God's grace, God's peace, God's love, and whatever the attitude may be, that you will be able to say thank you, God, just thank you, God, for being God. Let me send you with this word. Beloved of God, place your trust, your whole trust in God's abund absolute abundant love. Feel the powerful presence of God in your life and know that God's blessings are with you. Go in peace and may God's peace always be with you. And we all respond. Amen. Thanks be to God. Be good, be safe until we meet again. God blessings and peace to you all. Amen.